I would say that um, most of our faculty members are doing both activism um, and also scholarly research. They all are active uh, researchers, uh, publish books. Uh, so we do both teaching and active research. Uh, so just want to give you a, a bit of, 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 of our faculty. And of course, you have a chance to, I believe that you have a copy of the brochure and uh, you can look them up for the research and the scholarly activity on website. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, so let me move on to the applications. Uh, director can uh, compliment, uh, fill in if I miss anything. So we only accept for the fall term. Um, uh, we accept early, we review early decisions. Uh, you apply, you can apply as soon as you can in the fall, and then we're going to provide you um, a speedy uh, review. Uh, usually it will take about four weeks from the day the committee receive application and uh, we reply electronically, uh, send the decision down to uh, uh, Director Wilson. Director Wilson will of course notify you uh, whether you accept it or not into the program, right? So the deadline has been, because of the COVID, uh, again, this year we're going to extend the deadline from April 1st to now July 30th, 30th, so the end of July, so you have plenty of time. But I just wanna emphasize that it's important to uh, if you're interested in this program, you can apply early. Uh, if you get accepted, and of course you have time to uh, consider your options. Uh, the required documents for your applications. Uh, so uh, again, you know, transcript from all colleges, university you attended and graduated from. So applicants uh, who earned a bachelor degree outside the United States need to submit a course by course international transcript evaluation. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure Dr. Wilson can help you with that. I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on that. Uh, so um, for details, uh, see admission requirement on our website, um, on Brooklyn website, there's more information about that. Uh, two, and the second requirement is two page personal statement on your background, your interests, goals, and career plan. And what I like to emphasize is that you want to talk about why this program is a good fit for you, right? So I would suggest you can look up the professor, the faculty members who teach in this program, their research. Um, it is for own, your own benefit, but we wanna know how can we help you succeed in this program, not just to get a degree, a piece of paper. It's more importantly, it's about what you wanna get out of it. Is this program good for you? So we want to make sure that it's a good match, a good fit for you. And also you get the most out of these programs because ultimately you wanna go on to pursue career and national affairs, as well as help pursue a, you know, a PGA program somewhere, right? Uh, then the third requirement is two letter recommendations. Um, I strongly recommend that you, uh, if you um, freshly just got out of college, that's a lot easier because your professors still remember you very well. So if you are out of college for quite some time, then you might want to make sure that uh, at least get someone uh, who's an academic, uh, uh, the a professor that can give you right, a, a recommendation and then you're one of your supervisors or your colleague who you, who knows you very well. So um, so those are the three requirements. Um, GIE is not required. A lot of people ask whether GIE is required. No, it's not required. So those are the three major requirements. Right. Uh, I want a bit to be more specific about, about this because I got question from previous meeting. So usually the committee would look for, you know, a minimum, a minimum uh, requirement of GPA 3.0 or better. That said, um, if you um, have been out of college for some time and have been uh, in the profession, so feel free to uh, send us a, a resumes and also emphasize your professional development, your career, because that will also count. Um, the, the committee will take that into account as well. So uh, let me make give you a specific uh, example. An, an applicant with 2.5 or 2.6 GPA, that's below the minimum requirement. But you also have professional you know, experiences. Um, so the committee will take that into consideration and your personal statement. So there are cases where uh, people have you know, was, have been out of college for many, many years and they want to return to, to a master program to get a degree. Um, in this field. So we also take that in, into consideration, and uh, not, not just a GPA alone. I just want to make sure that, that uh, uh, I level that with you all. 
So any supplementary materials that would help resumes or creative works, feel free to, to send as supplementary materials with the, the application. That would be very helpful. Allow the committee to have a full consideration of your qualification for the program. Um, now, I'm going to move on to the degree requirements, right? This is what do you need to do when you get accepted in this program? What are you going to do? Well, the four required courses. Uh, the first one, uh, the, I strongly suggest that you would take uh, two courses, um, two required courses in the first year, professional development and comparative politics, usually are offered in the fall semester, and then research method and international politics. Those are the other two required courses uh, offered every year in the spring, right? So the first year is that you're going to take those four uh, required courses, right? Now, this is important. When you complete those four courses, you pretty much have a lot of leeway in terms of um, designing or uh, focusing on your concentration. For example, you want to focus on climate change. And not all courses offer at our department um, really focus on climate change. So we spread uh, the uh, expertise a bit wider than uh, your interest. So this is, I think it's important to talk about the elective courses. So four required courses and six elective courses. So 10 courses are required to complete the program, right? Uh, I wanna to move to com comprehensive exam and then come back to elective courses because elective courses, I need to talk a little bit more about that. So the third requirement is the uh, comprehensive exam, right? Uh, usually you, you are required to answer two questions. Um, then uh, this comprehensive exam are not designed to, to punish you, basically to give you an opportunity to review the materials uh, that you have uh, covered in the required courses. Uh, the committee will review um, your exam and it's a pass fail exam, right? Um, you have plenty of, you will have plenty of time to prepare for the comprehensive exam. So that's the only exit exams um, for this degree, right? Now the fourth one is a bit, um, tricky, but it's not as uh, complicated. So language exam, uh, this is also another requirement for um, to graduate. If you speak multiple languages, it's good for you. Um, we can file uh, language exam exemption, so you don't have to take a, a language exam. But uh, if you do not have speak any foreign languages, or perhaps at least uh, not not to at least an inter intermediate level. Then you're required to take some courses, uh, get to the up to the intermediate level. So you're required to have a minimum of B or higher in the, in the intermediate level. And again, you can also qualify for um, language exemption. The other option is to take exam itself, right? The graduate that you can schedule an exam question for you. So those are the four, uh, four required, um, um, the four elements required to graduate from this uh, program. All right, uh, I wanna talk about some of the courses that uh, uh, will be offered for the elective. So this is where, again, remember, you're required to take four required courses in the first year. And the second year, this is where you have a lot of leeway, right, to take courses of your interest. Um, so the six elective courses, you can take up to four courses outside our department. So that means if you're interested in, a, let's say, for example, a history, graduate history course, uh, you can do that as well, right? You can get uh, an elective for that or you can take courses at John Jay. If you're more interested in international criminal law, for example, you can take at John Jay at the graduate level, and then uh, you, you are required to apply as an e-permit and then you will get the credit transfer to Brooklyn College. So the point to remember is that you have the flexibility. You can take up to four courses or 12 credit outside our department, either in Brooklyn College or in CUNY -Y College that have um, MA programs. And so that's uh, the flexibility with this program, right? Um, graduate deputy, if I'm still the graduate deputy, I'm, go I'm going to advise you about how to do e-permit and get credit transfer and so forth. It's not going to be very complicated. In fact, it's quite simple. 
we in the CUNY system. So that's one of the advantage of this program is that you're not just um, taking courses at our department, you have the flexibility to look for courses and professor that you think can help you achieve whatever you like to achieve in this program, right? So that flexibility is very important and a lot of students like that. Um, speaking of flexibility, we also offer study abroad program, not this year because of the COVID, so no more uh, uh, study abroad program this winter. I thought I, I that that's it's not going to be about to be not going to offer you not going to offer a study about program but uh, next year I uh, will return to study about program so you that also you can take study about program as an elective course right you can apply um, take a course let's say going to China to India um, I lead one uh, study about program to Cambodia on genocide and transitional justice so those courses uh, are available to you you can take one of those uh, as one of the electives as well Then we have in the independent study and internship. You, in this program, you're allowed to take up to two uh, courses in this category. You can take even two internship or just one internship and in the independent study. Now, let me tell you a bit about independent study. Assuming that you take a, a class with a professor and uh, you written a paper about it and you want to pursue in-depth research on that topic. So it's, become a special topic. That is what you should, you should do. Basically, you register for an independent study. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. This is a student-focused course, right? You, you will do a large project, a significant project, in-depth research with the professor, right? So that's an independent study. It count for three grid, basically an equivalent of one elective course. Internship, it worked the same way, but it's quite different because you have to take initiative. You need to get accepted. Uh, to a pro to an organization, let's say uh, United Nations or any international organization in New York City. So you got to take that initiative. Uh, we do have Iran projects, uh, Iran uh, impact Iran project at Brooklyn College at our department. Um, that's the only one that we are running. But um, you got to if you're not interested in Iran or human rights in Iran, then you'd have to look elsewhere to get an internship. So when you get accepted into the internship. Uh, you can register for Paul 7940, which is the same course of a uh, course number for in and study. And so you complete the internship and then you write a 20 page paper on, on that topic. If it's human rights and it's policy uh, on, on human rights paper, right? A 20 page paper. So the two um, criteria, your, uh, your paper and also your, the evaluations by your supervisor at the internship uh, organization the two will form the basis for your grade evaluation. So we encourage our students to, to look for internship because uh, at the graduate level, uh, internship is uh, fundamental, it's, it's key to getting a job. And also if you want to apply for PG programs, uh, professional experience internship do matter. It really add, add up to, to the strength of your application. So we do encourage our uh, students in this program to do internship. And the good thing about this is that you're not just doing internship to get experience, but also it's count as a course. That's very important, a course. It's a three graded course. Uh, we do also have, I have got a lot of questions about whether math thesis is in, an exit uh, requirement. No, in this program it's not. You can do a math thesis, but it's an optional course. It count as one of the electives as well. Uh, so that's about it. Um, if uh, you have any questions, I'm sure I missed something and Director Wilson can also uh, help me fill in the gap. And so we're here to answer your questions. No problem. Thank you so much, Professor. Um, so I know I, I'm an alumni of Brooklyn College and I had taken a class with Professor Akume, um, who is like, one of the leaders uh, when it comes to uh, Boko Haram kidnapping the girls and just her activism in that area. So I, I really feel like the faculty in this program, they're leaders in their field. So if you're considering getting into international affairs, you really don't want to learn from anyone besides who are leaders in their fields. So um, 
I did put in the um, the chat box if you have any questions. Um, I think Quinn had a question. Before we answer the question, there's a short poll um, that uh, we just need to do for assessment purposes. If you can fill that out, um, but I will ask the question right now. So um, Quinn had a question about possible career paths with the degree. Okay, uh, thank you, Quinn, for a great question. Um, right, as I said, you know, all these courses are the, designed to help you achieve uh, uh, your career in international affair. But speaking of international affair can be broad, right? Uh, so again, I'm talking about the possibility of getting a job with this degree. Well, you can work for the State Department. Uh, there's a national exam, uh, become a, a, a foreign officer serving in foreign country. And the expertise that you will gain from this program better serve you, put you on that path toward becoming a you know, career, career diplomat. That's one way. Um, or you can, if you're interested in um, working in the uh, in international, for international organization like the United Nations or NGOs, non-governmental organization, that too, Environmental organization. So that too um, is a, um, uh, most of our, our graduate pursue uh, that career, right? Uh, some international students would return for, for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, I know a few of them. And um, some, very few, I would have to be honest, but very few will work in the uh, private sector as consultants. Uh, as far as I know, only one of the graduates, uh, you know, go back and uh, pursue a career in private sector. Um, so, so I hope I answered your question. Okay, is there an age cut off for work as a diplomat? Um, that's a good question, Dick. Um, I am not quite sure about, uh, about the exam, national exams um, requirement. I got to look up and I feel free, I'm gonna take note. Um, if, you, if, I, if you can send me an email, I think Miriam, um, have we had, some email communication in the past. Uh, well, you know, if you can send yes, me. Yes, we have. Yeah. Sorry. I can't hear you. Yes, Professor, I emailed you and um, I just received your email. Okay, great. I mean, I responded um, and I said, like, I gave you my number if you want to talk before Wednesday. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so I will follow up, follow up on that. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? I don't know if people are um, typing up. Uh, Regina has a question. Okay, from Ray, um, I'm actually interested in economic policy development in an international context. Can you speak about sustainable development economics in relation to the international affairs program? Do the six elective um, meaningful specialized in a field? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, as we have a specific elective course on um, um, economic development, the uh, uh, international political economy, because the subfield of international relation is international political economy. We look at the politics of economic relations among states. Uh, one course on north-south debate, so a north-south relation in world politics. So a number of, at least I, three to four courses that really focus on this area, international political economy, the question of development, the debate between uh, the global north, global south about the uh, development issue, right? So the answer to that question is yes. Um, if those course, elective courses are not good, uh, not good enough, assuming it's not, you want to pursue more, um, take more courses in international political economy, you can do that too. You can look up uh, for course, graduate courses at the CUNY Graduate Center, for example. They all do offer um, uh, economic development, uh, again, in the area of international political economy as well. And so this is where I talk about 
the flexibility earlier. This is where, uh, in you know, you feel free to talk to your advisor, your professor, and also to me. I'm still the deputy, uh, graduate deputy, about this possibility, right? So you can take some courses in our program offered by our department, and you can look up for courses elsewhere at C uh, CUNY Graduate uh, Center, for example, to complement uh, that, to build your concentration, to make it stronger. And so, yes, the answer to that is absolutely yes. Okay, and this is from uh, Taurus. Uh, hello, is for the elective classes, is it graduate? Oh, it has to be a graduate, of course, right? It has to be graduate um, courses. Let's say you want to take a course at Georgia, you can't take an undergraduate one and then count for a graduate course. No, it has to be an equivalent, right? Since we're in the CUNY system, the same CUNY system, if you take a graduate course at John Jay or Baruch or um, at uh, the Graduate Center, it will, um, after you file the E permit, so your, your grade and credit will be transferred to um, a Brooklyn College uh, uh, degree work. So the answer to that is it has to be an equivalent. So it has to be in a graduate course, right? As a, as a, at a master level or the PhD uh, doctoral level. Uh, okay, Quinn uh, asked me about uh, how many semester does the semester program take, right? So um, two years, that's if you um, don't take courses in the winters and summer, that will take two years, right, four semester. But um, I would say that at least one third of our graduate students finish in 18 months because they decide to take, you know, during the winter intercession, they take, you know, study of our programs or um, take a winter, uh, winter intercession course. And some actually uh, do not take a break during the summer. They, they um, take in an independent study with a professor during the summer one and summer two. So yes, uh, you can uh, graduate in less than two years. I'm talking about 18 months if you, um, take summer courses um, in a combination of that, right? Summer courses or you know, winter intercession courses. I have one last question. Um, I, let's see if I don't lose my, uh, my train of thought. Um, I, think I, just, I think I just lost it. Um, oh, no, no, no. I, um, I'm graduating in the, in the fall at the end of, um, at the end of the semester, mm -hmm. but I've majored in psychology. So right. are there any, um, prereqs that would would mean that I wouldn't get into the program or um no um we we um um well it's not too far from uh, our international relations so uh, what, what I want going to say is that the four required courses right basically prepare you to specialize in international affairs really. Um, there's a, yeah, we would want to, to, to see uh, applicant from you know, histories or sociology, but psychology, we also talk about political psychology. I mean, it's not completely far off from, from, uh, from, uh, from the, the concentration. One of the required causes on comparative politics, we talk about political psychology, the role of ideas, the role of uh, uh, you know, you know, um, ideas and political thinking um, in uh, foreign policy. So it's, I, I, I suspect that some of the psych courses from psychology uh, relate to that foreign policy thinking about decision-making process, for example. And so it's not far off. Even if um, that's uh, uh, remotely probably you don't uh, think that you can apply to international relations, uh, still the uh, four required courses really prepare, for example, the modern national politics course really introduce you to theories and concepts of international affairs. And so um, I, I would say that you can expand your horizon, expand your knowledge. And as far as the um, committee, uh, international relations, the, the application the admission uh, uh, committee is concerned, uh, they, as I said, you know, they look into your transcript, your strength um, in uh, your academic record, but also consider that master program is, is also designed for some, for some people who want to switch the specialization or the one to expand the specialization to pursue a career in national affair. And so really, it, it really eventually add, add up. Does that, I hope you answered your question there. 
Uh, Marcel um, joined a little late and wanted to hear about the admissions requirement again. Oh, okay. Um, the admission requirement again. Uh, let me go back briefly. So three uh, admission requirement transcript from first transcript from all colleges and university you have attended. Um, number two, two page uh, personal statement. Uh, again, I stress uh, the fact that you need to emphasize your backgrounds, interests, uh, goals, and your career plan in the uh, your personal statement. Make sure you write a concise uh, personal statement. And most importantly, why is this program is really a good match for you? Um, again, you know, we want to know, uh, you know, whether we can help you achieve your academic goal uh, in this program. And then the third requirement uh, is the uh, two letters of recommendation. Um, we prefer uh, at least one of the letter of recommendation come from your former professor because we want to evaluate your academic uh, performance records. Um, so, so that's that. That's about it. If you have any specific question, let me know. All right. Now I'm going to move to. Okay. What if I take who's? Okay, Torres answer question. What if I take a CUNY graduate class now? Would I still get credit for the program? Well, it depends, right? So this is about credit transfer issue. If you already complete a you you you're taking a. I'm going to take this example, right? You're taking a CUNY graduate class and you're going to graduate and get a degree for it. You, there's a rule, you cannot count twice for the same course. So because if you already use this course on Bell to get a degree, then you cannot reuse it to get a degree at another program. Does that make sense? It's very simple. But if you have, you took the course and you have not used it for your degree, then you can file petition uh, for credit transfer because you took the course, but the credits have not been used to obtain a degree. Therefore, you can get the credit transfer to Brooklyn College to this program. Okay, can you go over the admission process really quick? As I did a while ago, right? Okay. I'm just looking for loopholes. Okay. Oh, uh, that's, that's hilarious, Tino. Um, I wanted to ask only because I'm really interested to hear more. Um, what does an average or when you do take the students um, to Cambodia, what's mm. their experience like? Uh, I actually I'm quite shy to talk about uh, the program that I but I have, I'm going to say this. It's, um, the let me tell what I did first so that you have an idea of, 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 of this study abroad program. Uh, so I led this program for three winters. Um, so what I did basically to the first week, um, we have classes, regular classes at a hotel actually in Phnom Penh, not in New York, but in Phnom Penh. So we, we regroup in a hotel in Phnom Penh, capital city of Cambodia, and we're going to spend about three days just cover the history of the genocide, political history of Cambodia, and then we'll get to the conceptual the theoretical uh, uh, issue relating genocide. So students are well equipped, at least they know the history, they know the concept, they know the process of how genocide occur. And then they, the student will uh, be broken into small groups, they will do interview, they will develop their own research questions, uh, questionnaires, and then we'll go on. My job then was basically to facilitate the students to do their work. I did the translation. We have translated to help them with the, the language issue, um, making contact with survivors and, and perpetrators, former Khmer cadres in provinces. So they get to see the whole thing. They got to the academic side of it. It's not a full course. It's like a three weeks. But the first week is on the history and the um, and the uh, the concept of genocide, right? And then the second week will be going out to provinces, and this is where they they design their own uh, their own research, their own project, right? They would write reports after the interview, 
Um, so they learned the process of how to conduct interview uh, with uh, foreigners in the foreign context. Uh, besides the academic, the experience is, I would say, is very rewarding to most students because, uh, I mean, it took three weeks out of the, you know, winter is cold in your city and going to a tropical nation and they got to learn about the culture, talk to the people over there and get to see Uncle Wat is the one of the world wonders. Um, and so really, uh, and it's, it's, it's on many levels, uh, they learn a great deal. And, and, and if you, any of you interested in this program, I'm going to ask you to talk to the former participant in this program. They can say more because I really don't want to brag about this program. <laughs> I give you a bit of what I did, okay? <laughs> Um, I, I definitely, uh, being that I deal with international students, and I know a few that's gone through your program, I hear great things about it. Um, so I do want to say to the uh, prospective students that the Brooklyn College, we do give travel grants. So there are, you know, there is aid if you need help traveling, um, paying for travel. I know one of my uh, aides had gotten a travel grant from the Magna Career Center. And it could have been somewhere between $3,500 to $5,000 to go to do this kind of work. So there is support in the campus for this type of research. Right. Also, the scholarship office also offer every year. You got to apply, of course. If you get accepted, you get about $5,000 to cover this kind of international trip or, you know, um, uh, Saudi abroad program. China, Cambodia, India, um, elsewhere. Yeah. Are there any other, well, what other places do students go to um, through your program? China, India, um, I believe also on um, uh, Nigeria. I'm not so sure, I've, I, I think that's a, it, it's really, it depends on who are willing to teach you in the winter session because some faculties are busy with their research or their daily life. So it depends on, I got to, so perspectives for, Prospective student, you got to look up. If you got accepted into this program, then of course you got to look up the study abroad program, which is uh, an independent, uh, separate department. And they, their website, they off, they tell you about courses offer every this winter intersection, also summer. So again, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to do that. And so I think it's a very uh, you got to take advantage of that because really this is outside of the classrooms uh, experience. Uh, it's, you can read great books, but going to a foreign country, it really I mean, it, it, it amplify uh, what you learn in class, but also I think one step further, you got the experience, you got to see the impact of war. You can you see the impact of economic, lack of economic development, the human rights violation on the ground. I mean, there's no math. You can read great books, but the experience on the ground is, is eye opening. I mean, to me, I always learn new thing every time I take students. I learn from them, I observe, I observe what they're learning, ask them, oh, I haven't thought about that. You know, you guys, bring the American perspective and you look at it and you see different things. You know, I've learned from them all the times. I never stop learning. <laughs> yeah, this is really a great program. Um, are there any additional questions? Um, I will be giving the professor everyone's contact information because I'm sure everyone registered. So you'll get some follow up information. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Are there any countries anyone really wants to talk about where they're interested in going? Because it could be very possible we have a faculty member with the experience that's willing to take you. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Oh. Sure, everyone um, is going to get the contact information. There was a, an email, uh, a text message sent about the contact information. So everyone's going to, Professor will be receiving yours and you will be receiving ours as well. Right, and, and I just wanna say this because it's a COVID um, you know, pandemic issue. I, I usually I would uh, you know, like you to make an appointment if you meet in person and talk about it. But don't don't make this a problem, right? I will be available to talk to you today. I have a problem with internet, but I will never stop, you know, trying to fix the internet. So there's a new reality. But there's a way we can talk. Uh, use Zoom uh, or any other, you know. I have I have Zoom. I have uh, Skype. So whatever you like, you know. Besides email, we can we can actually do this. 
right? One on one, uh, virtually, of course, not in person yet. <laughs> I hope to see you in person, but well, you know, that's what it is. It is what it is now. <laughs> great. Thank you so much, Professor Path, for your great presentation. Again, if anyone has any additional questions, um, uh, Professor Path, can you put your email address in the chat box for yeah. them? Yes, let me, okay, yes. So you can, of course, reach out to Professor Path. Uh, you'll be receiving an email from me shortly. Um, and uh, again, he will get your uh, contact information. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, and I do want to second what he said about just the CUNY experience. That's one of the amazing things about being part of this university system. You can make your degree whatever you want it. So um, definitely check out our sister schools and you can take these other courses to supplement the amazing experience you'll have here at Brooklyn College. So if there aren't any more questions, I guess we can sign off. It was great seeing you guys, Professor Path, as always. Great talking to you. Same, likewise. Thank you so much for everyone. So no have problem. A good evening. Um, no problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you guys.